Hello everyone, I'm here again with Rick uh, and I have a massive list here of uh, about 40 questions which yes. we've, uh, we're going to split in two aren't we Rick? We're going to split in two. So we'll do, <laughs> we'll do one session now uh, and then we'll do one session later I think. Is that okay? And then we can... That is okay Andy, I am, um, uh, I am and then I'll, cool with that. And yes. then I'll unlock the door. Sure, thank, okay. thank you, thank Brilliant. you very okay. much. Okay, should we just dive in? Yep. Okay, first up is Steve Evans. He says, do you think we'll ever see Antares universe, uh, see the Antares universe expanding to other mediums, uh, e.g. video games, movies, TV, TV shows, shows etc. Et I, 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 well, we're getting some books wrote, reiterate, reiterated, reiterated. reiterated at the moment, but um, I can't imagine there's ever being a, a major movie franchise. Unless they want well, to give you lots uh, of money. It, well, they, well, they could have it for free if they wanted. You know, if there's any major movie, you know, if, if Disney you're watching, if Disney are watching there, there you go. If Disney are watching, um, then um, uh, you know, just get in touch. Uh, I, uh, your warlord can forward any any inquiries to me. But um, we can. Uh, we wouldn't want a lot of money. No. In, in fact, quite frankly, you know, uh, merchandising deal. Yeah, merchandising deal. <laughs> 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 we'll make the models for it. No, wait. <laughs> cool. Mm. Okay. Uh, Thomas. Then moving on. Thomas Rogers says, "Will the Sankiri return, and will we see them as their own faction?" Yeah. Uh, also, when will we see a Gar Mega Suit of Death? I can supply a lifetime of tea to make this happen. Yeah, I'm not sure what a Gar Mega Suit of Death is. No. Are we? Are we uh, the Command Crawlers are pretty mean. They are. Uh, they're quite mega mm. uh, and uh, deathy. Yeah. And I suppose it could be could be sooty in, in, in a sooty way. In a sooty yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yes, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll do more stuff for the Gar, and we'll um, uh, run out of ideas eventually, and have to do a Gar Mega Suit of Death. <laughs> but until that point. No, no, I don't know. Um, we will do more. We will do more for them, won't we? What's mm -hmm. the other? San Curie. Yeah. San Curie, yeah. Um, well, I mean, we are doing more San Ra for the Isaurians at the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see how those go. But, uh, I, I, you know, it's an obvious step, isn't it, to do uh, some mm. San Curie after we've got the San mm. Ra uh, finished. Yeah. The San, so, we're, so we're doing a command group, I think, yes. aren't we, for the San So Ra. get that tea brewing. Yes, yes. We, might, we, might, we might get there. Yes. We will eventually. Yes, I think so. Great stuff. Okay, uh, Lee Long says, is there any plans to put out a more robust and usable set of scenarios? Whilst I think the game system is great, the lack of depth in the scenarios when compared to things such as Team Yankee, or yeah, dare I never say, heard of it. the card system for 40k. Never heard of never that, heard that either. either. Really stymies um, the experience for me. I don't know why he says that. There's actually, the, 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 the basic um, scenarios in the book, the six basic ones, the, are based on the um, uh, uh, bolt action scenarios, hmm. and they are really robust. Yeah, that's um, what people have been using for tournaments, haven't they? Mm, bolt action. Yeah, I mean they're really robust. But um, uh, I think what you're looking for there is uh, something more like the card system that you've done for the uh, mm. for the campaign. Yeah, Mr. me and Mr. Horobin mm. have been working on something. Yeah, which gives you kind of subplots and objectives lim uh, and varied objectives and individual objectives mm. within the uh, the mm. game. So I think that would actually. I, I suspect that's the sort of thing that he's um, looking uh, Lee's looking for, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what goes on in Team Yankee, or what Team Yankee is. No idea. Yes, okay. Uh, and if, and uh, 40K's had various systems over the years mm. uh, uh, mm. that have been done to um, just vary the gameplay and, uh, uh, mm. and the objectives. And those sort of things are, are interesting. Uh, they're very hard to balance off. If, yes. if you can't, um, yes. uh, you can usually balance them for individual armies, but they tend to clash with some special abilities and some army mm. abilities, so well, we have to be that, careful with that. I agree, that's the reason why we haven't rushed these cards out mm. that we've been yeah. working on. We want to, you know, I think the card system's a great idea, especially if you uh, are meeting at a club and you haven't got a scenario, yeah. so you can lay your table out and draw some cards, and you've got a, a game then, haven't you, which yes. has got something to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it does need to be a bit more robust than what we've got, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I, I think robust and usable doesn't tend to go with that depth. The, the, no. the two tend to yeah, go yeah, against yeah. each other a bit. Agree. Uh, and default way of playing the games, I was a great Yeah, okay. But the, the other thing is, Lee, as well, we've, uh, we've got the scenario competition out there, uh, which is running till... The first week yes, of right December. One. Right Idle one. Man. Yeah, right Swine. one that shows what you're interested in. Yes. Uh, there's a prize, you know, the, the top three that we pick, uh, we're going to give an Algrim plastic box set to, one of the new plastics. So we'll make all the scenarios available as well. So, you know, more scenarios, great. That's what we want, isn't it? Yes. Well, I'm writing six new scenarios at the moment mm. for the new um, uh, supplement, and uh, I have to say, writing scenarios 
it's quite tough to come up with stuff that's mm. uh, an original take on a game. Agreed. Um, you know, you can very easily do a scenario that works for one set of opponents, but trying to do stuff that works for everybody mm. in all situations, it's mm. quite hard. It's quite, well, it's impossible, quite frankly. I agree. But I agree. Uh, you do your best. Yeah, and there'll be more coming down the path, sure. aren't they? Still yeah. young. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Wayne Clayton says, uh, will there be a fighting Antares pick your own adventure book? Yes, have a pencil if you and a write, one. <laughs> write one today, there will be. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. That'd be yeah. awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm an old Warlock Fight Top Mountains fan. That's what it is. Oh, is that it? Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Okay, Wayne. Write it. Write it. Uh, Cameron uh, Haggart says, answer my questions, questions, which we did before. Okay. Heavy hint, open the floodgates. Right. So we have one, two, three, four, five questions from him. Ooh, so right, we'll okay. go through these as quickly as we can. Uh, thanks, Andy and Rick, for the answers and discussion. Hopefully the seed is planted for a huge Gar tank crawler, another one, It was going to be a mega suit earlier. Yeah, now it's a tank crawler oh, uh, oh, in the upcoming yeah. drone armour supplement. Uh, uh, regarding the Isaurian uh, C3, I was under the impression they had it before they split. Could be older fluff I'm remembering. Uh, Could perhaps, be, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, but I, don't th I don't think I've referred mm. to it. Uh, it's usually Concord C3. Yeah. Because Com Concord Combined Command. Yeah. Although... Um, you know, there'd be the equivalent. There'd be military mm. shots within the Isaurians. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, it's a different. It was a different time period, wasn't it? For the Isaurians. Uh, yeah, well, they uh, split. Well, the, the Isauri Is was the originator of the Concord. Mm. So the um, uh, the split is a is a is a. It's not the Isaurians split from the Concord. It's actually the Concord split from mm. the Concord. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it's quite possible that they had something comparable. Yeah. Well, they must have had, in fact. Yeah, they're pretty close, uh, aren't they? Yeah, I just don't think I ever called it C3. No. Well, okay. Uh, okay. to my knowledge. Moving on, are there starfighters or their equivalent in service within the universe? I imagine C3 and Isaurians would have drone ones that blur the lines, so would the Algorin yeah. and the Gar have many flyers? Yeah, uh, the spaceships we're talking about. Mm, I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are spacecraft and there are one man. I tend to refer to them as scouts or explore craft. Mm. Um, when I talk about one-man ships, the um, uh, they they feature a little little bit in the in the background for Algorin and Gar hmm. in the next supplement because there are oh, okay. uh, they, they are there are ships that shadow fleets and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, so um, yeah, I, I imagine I imagine so, but um, I, I I don't feel the need to fix these things in stone until we. Mm. We do something like a game, <laughs> yeah. you know. Then you, then yeah. you need to make your mind up what they look like definitively, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Well, they're going to have them, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. We just need to work out what they are. Mm. Okay. His next question, Alex Spalding has kind of asked the same as well. He says, oh, right. "Do the Algorin field auxiliaries from their non-Algorin member worlds? If uh, so, yeah. how do the Algorin view them? Are they considered lower in prestige than the Founders Liga, uh, or some might be considered on the level of Vector Liga?" Right. And how do you pronounce Liga? Yeah. I usually pronounce it Ledger. Ledger, do you? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Ledger, then. Ledger. Uh, I've just been schooled. I've just been schooled. I've just been schooled. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> uh, do the Algorin feel like it's on the, the The Algorin Prosperate is a mm. sort of um, uh, something like a, a, a cooperative group of in, uh, of mutually uh, allied worlds that uh, trade. Yep. So the I don't think the Algorin field auxiliaries from other, other prosperous worlds. Those other prosperous worlds would field their own troops mm. who would be under their own command, but they might co-join with Algorin in some situations yes. to form yeah. a prosperous force. Yeah. In the same way as, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the other members of NATO sometimes join the Americans on the fun mm. expeditions in the <laughs> Middle East. But it doesn't mean they're necessarily auxiliaries. So um, kind of kind of like the Zylos then when they join yeah, with the C3. Yeah, I mean, they're um, uh, yes, they're, they're more be ally within mm. the Prosperate. They 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 are formal allies, so they would be cooperating Got within a, within a military organisation, but they wouldn't be part of it. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, is is uh, the way it would would work. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. yes, because the Prosperate does include other non-human um, uh, planets. Yeah. Oh, okay, but it's they'd be on a level. Kind of well, politically, they'd be on a level. It's just that the Algorin are the major player. Right, okay. In the same way in which I might suggest that the Americans are the major player in NATO. Got you. you know. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah. As opposed to the Concord, are the Algorin and maybe even the Isaurians less squeamish about executing, disposing of guard prisoners? I, don't, I never gave it much thought, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I, I'm not sure the Concord uh, would, uh, all the uh, Isaurians would, would dispose of guard prisoners. I, I, I mean, you talked about this before, didn't we? We did. We're going to send them, we're going to resettle them, I thought, on some yeah. sort of holiday camp, a bit like Butlins. I think so, that's nice. Yeah, I think so. Um, they'd yeah. have, you know, little, little other sort what of. Do you guys, what do you guys do to your figures after you've battled? What do you do? Don't you not just put them back in your figure case? I think so. <laughs> Figure case, or send, well, you send them on rides. Yeah, or something. I, I just, I don't know. They, they're all about killing the prisoners. Yeah, yeah, I will. You know. yeah. Horrible lot, really. Know. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. Oh, you're horrible. <laughs> it's a bit worrying. Have I you just... ever heard of the Geneva Convention? <laughs> <laughs> I just pack mine up and go home. Yes. Oh, dear. Uh, any languages you would recommend splicing together for the factions to name squads characters? Cough, Algren, Kill Squads, Cough. Uh, kill Squad, yeah, Algren, Kill Squad. I, I tend to avoid... I, I tend to avoid... Identifiable languages at all when I'm. Yeah. Tr uh, I mean, obviously you have to use English because you have to communicate in some fashion. Mm -hmm. um, but I try to avoid deliberately um, uh, uh, Germanic-sounding or, or mm. Oriental-sounding. I tend to mash them up a little bit, but mm. uh, um, I, I, I always try and avoid any kind of uh, uh, kind of that, that. I mean, you can do what you like if you feel the need to. Yeah. Uh, I know that. Um, in fact, we did mention this before as well because. Um, we talked about uh, the fact that I think Centurions and Decurions had been used in a piece of colour text. Or Mr. Bancroft, of I think, Bancroft, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, of course, obviously evokes that sort of Roman Empire mm. sort of feel. Uh, but um, I, 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 I say, and I was trying to avoid it. It's, it's why the, the, the leaders of squads are squad leaders. Yes. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's, that's, that's what they, they, I don't refer to them as sergeants mm. uh, because that, that immediately gives you a colour of, of, of World War Two. And, and yeah. uh, Do you think? Yeah. I think that's the thing, though, isn't it? People want to give some colour to their force. Well, if they want to, that's fine. Mm. But uh, I, I didn't want to do that myself. I, I thought it was. It, it, it would have a character of its own if it didn't have a identifiable. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, uh, well, that's the challenge, isn't it? it? Coming yeah. up with a character that isn't there. Because you're right, if you use centurions, yeah. you do think of Romans, don't you? Yeah, well, uh, the problem is that 40k is just so sort of laden with that kind of thing. Yes. And, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. oh no, it, it's, uh, it, it's Dan Von Death strikes again. <laughs> you're going, yeah, okay. And it, it became a gag in 40k, it and did. I think yeah. that unfortunately Games Workshop then forgot it was a gag and started using it seriously. And they have, yeah. yeah. Oh no, the orc knobs are cut off fighting. <laughs> Yes. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, that's, that's one thing to do. Okay. Right, let's move on then from, uh, from Cameron. Uh, on to Scott Bowman. He says, sorry if these seem mundane questions, but here goes. Ooh, mundane questions, my favourite. We God. like these. I like those. Yeah. I like mundane ones. Uh, Gar Command Crawler has two Scourer uh, mounted on front oh. of the vehicle. Oh, he's asking if they can fire at different targets. The fire order allows it to fire yeah. at different targets with each weapon. But uh, does the vehicle ever fire off? Yeah, this is what happens when you uh, design a game and then trust figure designers to make figures for it. You sometimes mm. end up with things that pose questions that you never imagined would have to be posed. Um, mm. In general, we treat it as um, having a limited fire art, which is to say if you can draw a line from the, uh, uh, the weapon yep. to the target. It doesn't have to be straight ahead through the weapon, really. No. Uh, but it can't fire behind itself, for example. That's generally how we treat it. But really, according to the rules, it's 360 degree. Because right. you can fire and move at any time. So yes. you could go fire, move, fire. Um, uh, so strictly, the strict reading of the rules would be a 360 degree, but we don't tend to do that. No. Uh, well, I don't. No, I don't. Fire from the weapon, yeah. Yeah, fire from weapon, and, and without moving it yes. between shooting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From, from a vehicle, I mean, a guy can shoot yeah. in any direction. Well, if the vehicle's got turrets, you can mm. fire, because yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's the rule. If you've got different weapon systems, which mm. those two scours out are, yes. then um, uh, you can always fire a diff at a different target with each weapon system. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, where you've got a fixed weapon, you generally mm. orient the, uh, the, the vehicle to, to face in that direction. Yes. The problem with scourer is the scourers are meant to be two different weapon systems, but mm. are made as if they were one. Yes. They're both fixed together, the they're facing the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, that's, that's why. But um, yeah, we, trend, we tend to do that, and that's, that's not a rule, that's merely a convention we adopt, but which I'd recommend. Yes, me too. Yeah. Uh, Gar plasma reactors. What exactly happens when they explode? <laughs> Gar <Gasp, laughs> <trip. laughs> That would have taken me out as well, then. Yeah, it would, yeah. yeah. Gar suit troopers obviously die, but what about Gar vehicles? With yeah, lots of clarification. Uh, again, this question was, uh, I think it was in the last batch mm, of questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I do need to do Q&A on this. Um, I think the... Um, 
I think I've half done it. I just haven't quite got around to pressing the send button yet. Um, I think the the vehicles explode as well. I mean, if if your if your uh, if your plasma reactor goes up, I think you're bad. It doesn't matter how big a thing you are, no. you're in trouble. Um, so uh, I think that's the answer. Is, is if, if a um, uh, if the plasma reactor on a car vehicle explodes, uh, the, whole, yeah. the whole vehicle is destroyed. Yep. Um, is, is the is the answer we came up with, I think, after, yeah, after discussing yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, it's a big think, bang, isn't it? Big bang, very, very bad news. Yeah, mm. cool. Okay, Jordi Irvine, uh, Irvin, sorry, Jordi, uh, says, do damage results affect weapon drones differently if they are in units of two or more? Yeah, this is another uh, consequence of at the last minute making um, weapon drone units, multiple figure yeah. units, which was done simply to... Um, Accommodate the fact that we'd put a light weapon drone on the sprue, yeah. so you end up with more than you can use. If this, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think the answer is yes. They, you'd you'd roll for each drone separately, mm -hmm. but then you'd apply the results to the whole unit, which does yeah. mean that in the case of um, pins, you're likely to accumulate a lot of pins if you've got a lot of units being uh, being, being being taking damage rolls. But a damage roll is the equivalent is the equivalent. Of of a dead result for infantrymen. You know, so. It is, yeah. So it's like a second chance, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. it's any result that results that, that means you, you survive is good. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. No, I agree. Uh, and also, you know, two or three of those in a unit is pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty full on, aren't they? They need yeah. some some negative, I think, to them. That's right. And they do have a quite high um, uh, res. So Eight, I think. Yeah, yeah. you're only going to be taking um, uh, uh, multiple damage rolls where you've been hit quite badly. Mm. So. Um, I think the uh, the answer there is uh, uh, yep. Sorry, th th those are the lumps. Yep, yep. Uh, I believe what they say. <laughs> Not sure. Okay, May May Gelt says same sort of question for Rebel Guard crawlers. I ended up with one being da damaged out of a unit of two, and it yeah. lost a command dice for the whole unit. Yeah, it would do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, oh, that's right. It is the same question, isn't it? Mm, it is. Yeah, same answer. Yep. Uh, Chris Moody, are there plans in the future for a possible role play game setting? Yeah, uh, there's a chap who. Um, uh, uh, who um, I uh, uh, I know from uh, from working on other projects with, who, who asked me if um, he could have a go, and I said, well, you, you, why don't you just have a go and uh, tink, tinker in the background, and mm. if, you, if you actually feel uh, if you get to a point whereby you want to talk to Warlord about it, we'll do that. So um, yeah, there's definitely the opportunity to, to do it, mm. and as I say, some, so somebody did say they're they're uh, having a quiet to a project on, in the background, but there's no there's no plans to do to such. We don't see the no, need to. No. But again, um, if, if someone brings something really good to us, and we can't mm -hmm. say no, we won't say no, will we? Uh, that, that's right. Well, as I say, there's, there's, uh, I've got a, uh, a, a chap got first dibs on it. Mm. So um, if anyone else wants to do it, then they would have to uh, uh, wrestle in touch and uh, wrestle him. That's what we'll do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Geordie Irvin again. <laughs> Antares is set in the far future with billions of worlds. Ruled by humanity, yeah, yeah, yeah. many of which mm. are utopian societies. Sounds a great place, Rick. Yes. Uh, given that scope, will we see a larger range of facial features and skin tones among the standard humans and the official artwork and colour schemes going forward? One of the cool things about future societies is they can exist without the silly prejudice that affect the real world. Uh, yeah. Well, yes, uh, there is that. Um, I'm all in favour of, uh, of that. Um, the, um, yeah, me too. The, the, the artwork um, that we do and the painting of the figures isn't something I have anything to do with it's all done by the studio yeah um, the um, uh, general idea in Antares is that there are no human there are no identifiable races uh, in the current sense so in theory everyone's a bit of a mix of everything yeah so um, if you wanted to go out and, and, and create a, uh, a, a new races based on um, uh, the environments of the Antares universe, th th then the, you get to you get to the sort of races that I've created. Yes, yes. You don't get back to um, uh, the races that exist today necessarily. No. But if people wanted to paint their figures mm. in a particular way, they could certainly do that. It's not yeah. a problem. And I imagine people in all sorts of colours. Yeah, we've seen um, lots of colours for C three for a start. You yeah, know, blue and green and and black and. Where, where yeah, they can well, do lots of uh, yeah. full range of human yeah, colours, they don't yeah. they don't have to be all um, Nordic looking. No, no, um, no. The problem is when you sort of give these tasks to um, artists, the mo the artists we're working with are mostly um, in in England, and they're mostly uh, they're mostly white Europeans. Yeah, not all actually. No, but they mostly are, and they t well they tend to they tend to latch on to that um, kind of colour mm. colour white. You, you got that a lot with 40k. I remember the Dark Angels when they 
something to do with Dark Angel's pitch for, I think it was Space Marine, and it was this sort of uber, uber Nordic thing came back and I thought, well, the Dark Angels were never supposed to be. No, no, no. no they were never no. supposed to be blonde and blue, uh, <laughs> blue, uh, blue-eyed blonde. They were always supposed to be kind of somber and dark looking. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what tends to happen. So um, it's not a conscious choice, is it? At no. The we maybe we need to think about it. But, you know. I think so long. So, I mean, I always imagine that the um, uh, the you'd get a variety of skin tone and mm. a variety of um, of, of uh, uh, kind of facial expression on every yeah. single world, but they would have as much to do with new racial features or new mm. diversions from the human time as they would anything existing. So, Agreed. You know. But if you want to paint your guys up, oh, so they all look like whatever, yeah. then please do. Paint them how you want. Definitely. Paint them how you want. Yeah. Okay, uh, Geordie Irvin again says, are aircraft used much by the various Antarian armies? Yeah, well, I imagine they are, but of course they don't feature much in war. The reason they don't feature much in war games is it's not very convenient in a, in a, in a, in a kind of company level action to have... Mm. Um, aircraft and when you start to sell them as models people start to go oh, we want to use them in games and you start to end up with having like dog fights into a World War One fighter fashion yeah, over a battlefield yeah, yeah, yeah. which is just a bit silly it's just um, wrong scale isn't it yeah I mean uh, Bolt Action has um, a sort of flyover system which yeah. is uh, which actually I think 40k did at various times yeah uh, and I, I would probably adopt something like that but um, uh, I think we'd like to get a lot of other the models made before we start worrying about aircraft. dedicated aircraft. Yeah. And having said that, I always think of the um, C3 big drone. I mean, the drones are effectively suspended vehicles, hmm. so they have like a, a, a mode that allows them to drop from up, the atmosphere down. Okay. It's yeah, that yeah. Way, isn't it? Yeah, down. Yeah, down, yeah. down, down, down. Yeah. They, uh, through the atmosphere. <laughs> And uh, which enables them to then operate on the ground mm-hmm. or thereabouts. But they can use their um, reaction engines to almost go into flight mode anyway. Oh, okay. So I always imagine these things having flight mode. And it's the same with the bikes. Mm. Uh, I, I, I just don't want to introduce that into the game yeah, quite, yeah, yeah. quite yet. It seems, yeah. um, it, seems, it seems a level of uh, detail and complexity that we don't quite need just yet. I agree. I mean, you say he's, he, is, he mentioned also about the bolt action style tack runs. Yeah. They said, is there any chance of space weapons that could fire onto the tank? Yeah, in the same way as... But I think I've even done that on... Did I do that for one of the... Yeah, yeah. I think we can do that, can't we? Well, I thought I did in. do it, and I thought it was in one of the uh, Zylos um, scenarios. We certainly yeah. had it at one point, where you do a preparatory bombardment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is. Oh, okay, yeah. great stuff. Okay, uh, Pascal Tiger says, if you could be any animal, what would it be and why? He says, serious question. I need oh, to right, know okay. from a game designer. Uh, mm. a, a question what sort of animal? Need to know. Yeah, tells a lot about the person. <laughs> wow. I've always had a soft spot for the golden rumped elephant shrew. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, I think it'd be really cool to be a um, a plague bacillus, don't you think? <laughs> uh, so, uh, you're, you're, you're seen a pestis, isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, that, that'd be fantastic. You'd be one of them. I can see you as that, actually. Yeah. Mm. yeah I, I think it's very me. It is very you. Mm. Well, good question, Pascal. We like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he says, on a side note, will you see any standardised competitive packs, structures from Warlord, uh, like, say, Infinity, or will the community be left to their own devices? I haven't looked into Bolt Action, but I see it's a huge, it's huge over here in Oz, yeah. and they have quite intricate tournament structures. I don't know how or who develop these. Yeah, well, they're not really my... Um, no. uh, I, I mean, marketing the game and organising things like tournaments... Mm. It's something else I'm very happy to turn up, roll dice, and, uh, and uh, yeah. drink tea. Prefer to play, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, or or, um, mm. or go around and just just um, so we wouldn't do that, and we don't do that. Oh, do you think that's a wise idea? You know, just interfere. But um, yes, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's up for wall or two. I say you probably know more about it than me, Andy. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, we will do some tournament packs definitely. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff, especially in Australia, has been done by the guys down there. They've really done a good job on it. Uh, but we really do need to do something because I know people do like yeah. organised play and they do like tournaments. I think it's one for next year, early it, it next year. It was always intended that mm. we should do, uh, uh, and in fact we had a, um, a, uh, a staff member who was whose job it was to do that, mm. but his job was also to do lots of other things, and I yeah. think the other things tended to take priority. Away, yeah. So um, uh, sadly we didn't get... In fact, we was, it was one of the things I wanted to sort out really almost for day one, mm. but um, uh, you know it fell by the way, sadly. Well, you know, I can organise it. Okay. 
I'll do it. You just there just you go. Deal, I'll organise it. Sorted, mate. Sorted. There, there you go. go. Let's not talk about it anymore. I'll sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You get everything, don't you? you get everything. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love it, so it's okay. Uh, Thomas Rogers says, is Lady Gaga a gar in disguise? Yeah, I, I, obviously. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I would have thought that You've was... You've seen her, haven't you? Of course. Have you not noticed? Yeah. Matt Houghton. Mm. Gar use humans as slaves, I would presume. Well, the ones uh, they don't liquidise. Would Gar <laughs> have human slave troops or rebel Gar human help? I, I don't think so. I think they're just too repulsive. I think the, the, mere presence of a, the mere presence of a human in the room would be enough to sort of turn their stomachs. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think they'd have human help. But yeah, you never know. Fartok's a bit weird. It's just possible Fartok might make a human friend. It's just possible, but mm. but boy, that would be strange. It would. It, be. It'd imply you'd be sort of yeah, no. No, I don't, no, think, I don't so. think so. I, mean, I don't no. think so either. I mean, no. uh, Karg has a couple of slaves, but that's about status, isn't it? Uh, well, he has human slaves, yes. Mm. Um, but uh, uh, the, the question is really, do they have slave troops? But they no. Uh, or, or human help? So it's it's it's, it's humans that they're. Um, also, the, uh, the Gar think they're better than everybody else, don't they? So. They, but they are better than everyone else. They'd have to we know. move along. Uh, and. <laughs> Andy Patrick says, one of the previous videos talked about how the dice draw system could easily be used for skirmish, one dice yep. per model, yep. or epic scale, one dice per uh, formation. For formation the last, yeah. last one we did was like, skirmish seems uh, straightforward, but would seem rare for an entire formation to want to do the same thing. Um, how could you approach this problem? How do you approach it? Yeah, uh, I don't think it'd be necessarily rare. I mean, that's how things work in real life. Hmm. Um, uh, I would make some provision for... Um, individual units being able to um, tally off. I mean, basically, if you give everything an advance order, you can do pra you can do almost anything mm. anyway, because you could retreat with some troops, leave some mm. others in position, leave some mm. standing and shooting. Yeah. So an advance order gives you the opportunity to do anything with mm. the formation, really. Yeah, you, just, yeah. um, e even if that formation became slightly disconnected, mm. um, you know, in Antorian terms, as long as they are in communication, they still form the same shard. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's that much of a problem, but there are ways of, um, say, going, right, I want this un this formation to rally or run, mm. but I want that individual unit to do something else. Yes. And the ways of doing that could include, let's say, have this, the commander, the player, having a number of dice in his back pocket, aside, yeah. that are not being drawn, mm. that he can play... To oh, you could just assign them. Yeah, you just assign them. Yeah, 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 yeah. And okay. you might generate those randomly at the start mm. of each turn. Mm. Or there might be a rolling system where you generate, where, where at the end, mm. after you've done something with that unit, you go, and can I keep my order giving ability, make a test, and you can or can't. And then mm. you either take another dice that you can use it sometime yeah. later in the turn or not. Like it. You could do that, uh, for example. Mm. There are, yeah, there are ways and means. It's not beyond yeah. the wit of the com It's company level then as well, isn't it? So yeah, you, your yeah. company would act like that. They're, those are all simple design. Mm. Mm. I, I wish that all problems were that easy. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> he said as well, uh, same thing about the Epic. He says, in the Epic game, six orders on an order dice might not be appropriate. Blah, blah, blah. But we've covered that. That's good. But he has sneaked in the end here. Can you tell us any more about Fantaris? Fantaris, my, my fantasy adaption of yes. Fantaris. Uh, would they use the same, same order, order dice or something different? different? No, it uses the same order dice and it's purely a adaption of the rule system to a fantasy environment. So it's actually the same rules. Oh, brilliant. It's the same rules. I, I deliberately didn't change anything. Mm. There are one or two bits that are slightly redone in terms of presentation mm. because I thought of a better way of doing it after I've oh, done Antorin. Okay. Uh, uh, and there are, um, I dropped out the rules for buildings because the building rules in Antorin are quite complex. Because but they needed to be, didn't they? Yeah. So in a fancy environment, you, you want rules for the old town, the old hovel. Yeah. So I, I, I did a simplified version of those. Okay. But the actual core rules for playing the game mm. are exactly the same rules. Um, because I didn't want to do something that was slightly different. Because if you do no. something slightly different, it just somebody around here gets very confused. Possibly, well, and me, and me. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, uh, it's far easier to make it the same. So just, that's what I did. Um, the main difference with Fantori's game is that I've added stuff to cover um, lots of magical and unusual special abilities for the mm. creatures. Um, and I added a, uh, magic rules, uh, flying creature rules, which I have, I have added. Um, only a simple way, but, uh, but I've done mm. that. And then lots and lots of special rules for um, mm. things that... Uh, and really, I wanted to just make a game that 
so we could just take our existing fantasy collections out and just play a game. Yeah. So I've had to r do rules which kind of replicate things people expect. I've not mm. done something new. So the dwarf army, um, you know, has got... Um, and I've, I've also introduced... A, I think that fantasy has always felt it should have a certain sense of humour to it. And the early days of Warhammer did, and it, it did, gradually yeah. got screwed out of the system yeah, yeah. by people who've got no sense of fun. <laughs> So, um, so I've made all the special rules quite funny. Oh, so you've got, yeah, so the dwarves have mad nut of bastards, for example, <laughs> and the axes. They have various sizes of axes. There's yeah. the, there's the axe, there's the huge axe, and the bloody huge axe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a uh, slightly more um, sweary version. Of we like sweary. Swiss, 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 swiss swiss version. Yeah, 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 and uh, uh, and things like that. And uh, you, but it's got all those classic fantasy mm. motifs in it. So. And is it the same? I've told you much more about Fantoris than about Antoris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it the same size, size kind of armies, though? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. It's, it's um, a warband level game. Okay. So it's not a skirmish, and it's not a big game hmm. like, um, say, a fantasy version of um, Hail Caesar would be, or Warhammer hmm. Wars. It's the same sort of size that the original Warhammer was. Oh, okay. Um, and which a lot of games are these days, hmm. you know. Hmm. So, you know. 50 figures a side is quite a good army. Cool. And yeah, you, but we've done it for armies we've got. We're, you, mm. We've not done it to try and sell figures because we don't sell fancy figures anyway. No. Um, uh, but um, we've, uh, uh, I've just done it so that um, those of us who've got existing armies or who are putting little armies together mm. out of a sense of nostalgia, like mm. Paul, Paul's putting together a, um, a dwarf army based on these old Warhammer dwarfs. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, which, cool. looks, which looks beautiful, actually. It does. He's a really nice painter, isn't he? Yes. Cool. Anyway, we're talking about Fantaris. Let's move on. Sounds good, though. Uh, Matt Houghton asks, I have also noticed in Gates a lack of hats. Is this deliberate? Yes. Yep. I'm anti-hat, <laughs> as you may have noticed. No hats. No hats. Okay. Andy Patrick says, Fartok and his followers seem happier than other Gar to use human tech. Oh, just, just happy to use oh, tech. Just, just happier. happier. <laughs> uh, <I'm> more fulfilled. <laughs> would they also be prepared to live in peace with humans or fight alongside them as allies? Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. Oh, no. 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 Ooh, God, they're, God. they're just rebelling against the Gar, aren't they? Uh, they're, I, I think they're really... Well, Karg, of course, he knows... Uh, 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 Fartok knows that Karg mm. is a bad guy and that he's... he's he, the Karg is the real traitor. Mm. So um, Fartok is really the the good guy who's been rejected by... You know, he's the what-do-you-do-when-you're-branded man, isn't he? Yes, he is. For those who remember that but 1960s he... TV series. <laughs> <laughs> but he's still a guy. He's still a guy, but he's, he's been wrongly accused mm -hmm. and cast yep. out. So he, 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 the, the good... The good ending for a Fartok is that uh, Karg is exposed as the uh, mm. as the traitor and the evil scum within the empire that he is, and um, that balance is restored. And that, uh, mm. yeah. Well, that answers his next bit as well, because he says, what happens if Fartok wins, kills Karg, uh, Karg mm. defeats the empire, will he become emperor? Well, you see, I don't think he can become uh, the uh, supreme commander. No. Uh, because um, he, he, what he's done, I think he... he in preserving the Gog Empire, the, Karg, uh, the, the Empire of the Gog, mm. I think uh, he will come to realise that he cannot be the, em the, the Emperor. I'm going to come the Emperor now. <laughs> you started it. Um, the uh, Supreme Commander, yes. because he's not Gar enough. He no. has mutated too far from the idea, so he'd probably yep. have to do the long walk out into the universe. Because mm. he's, fight, he's fighting for right, isn't he? He's fighting but, for but right. But he can't ever fill that role. Ooh, that's yeah, quite sad, yeah, isn't that? It's quite tragic. Very sad. I think. I think. I think he's ultimately a very sad and heroic character. Is that's really tragic. Despite. I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> Poor uh, Fartor. Yeah, I know. Oh dear, George. Uh, it's destiny. Oh, Jordi uh, Irvin says he's come back to spaceships again. How does starship combat work in Antares? We don't know, do we? He says, is it like Star Wars or Star, Star Trek? Trek? Is it more, more realistic? realistic? When we've been talking about this, mm. because me and um, uh, Tim. Uh, we uh, we tried to do s some stuff on this, and uh, uh, we kind of came up with a basic idea of how to, how it all works. Mm. That's, that's, that's based on real space dynamics, and it, and is real. It's reasonably realistic insofar as you can have something realistic when mm. it's um, uh, so, so 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 based on science that is, is imagined rather than real to some extent. Um, mm. But. Until we actually design a spaceship game, I wouldn't like to nail it down. No. Because it'd be fun to have a spaceship game. I agree, yeah. But if you want to use real, real, real physics for it, 
you start to it starts to become unfun. Yes. Um, it's not a, a I and mean, the reason why Star Trek and Star Wars don't have real uh, physics they they tend to um, it's World War Two aerial combat in space or or World War Two naval combat in space to yes. some extent isn't it? Yes, I mean, it is. uh, Star Wars is uh, is the Battle of Midway writ large. It is. Um, uh, is it, simply because it, it's, it's got a drama to it. Mm. Mm. We like a good drama. We like a good drama. We do. Um, and, drama. Uh, and Star Wars and Star Trek uh, have both got that, that element to them, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, drama so over have, reality. Uh, ultimately, yes. But um, uh, we, we are trying quite hard to keep it more, more credible than uh, uh, yes. either of those two. Yeah, it needs some credibility, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, last one uh, for this session. Uh, Johnny Grogan says, fellas, awesome community first off. Really gamer friendly. That's brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Johnny, because that's what we're trying to do. Uh, okay, will Antares see any type of greys? Yes. I'm not sure what a grey is other than an old person. There are mm. many old people in Antares, me not least of all. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, are, we talking, are we talking aliens? I don't know. I think so. Greys. I'm not sure what he means. I'd left it there in case you knew. No, no, I, I, I'm not sure. Not sure. Not, I mean, we, we're unsure. What you mean, we're Johnny? Unsure what you maybe, mean. maybe ask the question again next time. Yes. But if we're talking aliens, then if we're yes. talking skinny little alien grey guys, then you go. I'm not. Well, they're a kind of human morph, really, aren't they? I mean, they're obviously humanish, of mm. which there are many and, and varied in the. Yes. Uh, and Tory universe of assorted colours and racial types have we have, have, have we already have, have established we have explored in great detail. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, who knows? Okay. If we're talking, on the other hand, about you know parrots, I say, but I'm not entirely sure there either. You're talking Nor- Norwegian greys, is that? In African grey. African grey. African grey. Norwegian blue, mate. Norwegian blue. <laughs> See, I know nothing about African parrots. African grey. We had an African grey when I was a kid. He's the bird man. Mean bastard, it was. <laughs> mean bastard. On that, hmm. that's it. We'll round that up now. He used to say, come in, vicar. <laughs> and you thought it to say, come in, vicar. And they used to call the dog. Nurse. Nurse. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks, Rick. And Thank we'll you. see if we can do another session as soon as we can. Yes. Mm. Cheerio, everybody. Bye-bye, Out everyone. there in video land. Bye-bye. See you later. Yeah. Please update your Nanosphere interface regularly.